for us to tell our story. But to me, it was a heavy burden, was left at me. Mm-hmm. I think that the stories should be told because there's not only six families, there is thousands of families mm-hmm. that have, each have affected and they, have, they all have their own story. They all have their, some people have had justice and a lot of people haven't. It was tough, but I knew there was a greater good. It was, it was the story was getting out there, it was being told. So there was a purpose and I think that kind of drove me to continue the process. Um, and I kept saying, it's a means to an end. It's getting the story told and hopefully it does what it's meant to do. And just for the family and acknowledge Annette and the other children there, but it was, a, it was a difficult process, but it was something very, very special. I think we, we always said that it was something, it was, there was something magical about it, you know. It was like a counselling service for me. I mean, we, I talk about Annette all the time, but sitting among people and then the questions coming out, we were able to talk openly, you know, and answer, whereas we never had a counselling. Anything went on, it was on behind closed doors. Our doors was closed, we had a deal with ourselves, my mother and father had a deal with it, it was never spoke about. You know, but in there we were able to answer questions and stuff and speak among ourselves as we're sitting here today. You know, and, and it really had an, that, that impact itself was enough for me. Titled it The Crack and Everything. A very, very appropriate title for it. Because what I learnt uh, from participating in this along with the other five families, every family had a crack in it. Back in the 70s, who cared? As Mr. McGavigan said, you closed your own front door and that was it. Nobody was interested. Oh, Claudia's a very small village, one main street and two we have streets. Three car bombs, devastating, nine people dead, over 40, 50 people lying injured. So everybody had their own problems and everybody was trying to heal themselves. And you have to heal yourself because nobody else is there for you. And then, of course, if you go on to the legal end of it, and I only can speak for Claudia, but I also can mention that the other families, they haven't got justice. They will never get justice. I know for a fact of someone who went to Westminster in relation to the Claudia bombs, there's not a scrap of paper to be found. You don't have politicians stand up and saying, you know, Callum Finney, Damien Harkin was murdered and such and such. You know, you don't have that. You know, no matter who they are, you don't have power. Clary, you don't have politicians fighting mm. for them, you know. Well, it happened while we were young, and as you get older, each stage of your life, you become a mother, you become a father, and you have grandchildren, you're going, my God, that was awful that happened. But we went through it and didn't think there was anything wrong, you know. And there's something about it, like I never knew Annette, obviously I wasn't there, but there's something that makes me feel connected to her by doing this story and nearly keeping her for <coughs> alive. And if there's some bit of small good that can come out of it, it would be great. Do you know, her death wasn't in vain, so to speak. This never should have happened, and I think it has to be taken out, but I think it has to be taken out to the young people in a very purposeful way, and I think collectively it has got a great impact. But I do think workshops targeting younger generations um, that's starting to get involved in different things and about to take the wrong path. I think it's important for them to hear the true impact. Mm-hmm.